Hello viewers. Welcome to the channel Amazing Civil Engineering Studies. Time to enter the world of civil engineering. Here we will learn about different concepts related to civil engineering. Please subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon for more new updates. In today's video we are going to discuss about Building Construction Staircase Types and Design of Staircases A staircase consists basically of a series of steps, which in turn consist of a tread, the horizontal part, where the foot will rest, and a riser, the vertical part. Although it can vary in its design, each step must also have one or more landings, handrails, and a small nosing. Staircase is an important component of a building providing access to different floors and roof of the building. It consists of a flight of steps, stairs, and one or more intermediate landing slabs between the floor levels. Various Components of Staircase and Their Details there are various components or parts of a staircase which have their own functions. Each components of a staircase and their details is discussed. Following are the various components of staircase. Step The step is composed of the tread and riser. Tread the part of the stairway that is stepped on. It is constructed to the same specifications. Thickness, as any other flooring. The tread depth is measured from the outer edge of the step to the vertical riser between steps. The width is measured from one side to the other. Riser the vertical portion between each tread on the stair. This may be missing for an Open stair effect Nosing an edge part of the tread that protrudes over the riser beneath. If it is present, this means that, measured horizontally, the total run length of the stairs is not simply the sum of the tread lengths, as the treads actually overlap each other slightly. Starting Step or Bullnose Where stairs are open on one or both sides, the first step above the lower floor may be wider than the other steps and rounded. The balusters typically form a semicircle around the circumference of the rounded portion and the handrail has a horizontal spiral called a volute that supports the top of the balusters. Besides the cosmetic appeal, starting steps allow the balusters to form a wider, more stable base for the end of the handrail. Handrails that simply end at a post at the foot of the stairs can be less sturdy, even with a thick post. A double bullnose can be used when both sides of the stairs are open. Stringer stringer board, or sometimes just string the structural member that supports the treads and risers. There are typically two stringers, one on either side of the stairs, though the treads may be supported many other ways. The stringers are sometimes notched so that the risers and treads fit into them. Stringers on open-sided stairs are often open themselves so that the treads are visible from the side. Such stringers are called cut stringers. 
Stringers on a closed side of the stairs are closed, with the support for the treads rooted into the stringer. Winders Winders are steps that are narrower on one side than the other. They are used to change the direction of the stairs without landings. A series of winders form a circular or spiral stairway. When three steps are used to turn a 90-degree corner the middle step is called a kite winder as a kite-shaped quadrilateral. Trim Trim, e.g. quarter round or baseboard trim is normally applied where walls meet floors and often underneath treads to hide the reveal where the tread and riser meet. Shoe molding may be used between where the lower floor and the first riser meet. Trimming a starting step is a special challenge as the last riser above the lower floor is rounded. Flexible Plastic trim is available for this purpose, however wooden moldings are still used and are either cut from a single piece of rounded wood, or bent with lamination scotia is concave molding that is underneath the nosing between the riser and the tread above it. Banister, railing, or handrail the angled member for hand holding as distinguished from the vertical balusters which hold it up for stairs that are open on one side, there is often a railing on both sides, sometimes only on one side or not at all. On wide staircases there is sometimes also one in the middle, or even more. The term banister is sometimes used to mean just the handrail, or sometimes the handrail and the balusters or sometimes just the balusters. Volute a handrail and element for the bullnose step that curves inward like a spiral. Avolute is said to be right or left-handed depending on which side of the stairs the handrail is as one faces up the stairs. Turnout instead of a complete spiral volute, a turnout is a quarter turn rounded end to the handrail. Gooseneck the vertical handrail that joins a sloped handrail to a higher handrail on the balcony or landing is a gooseneck. Rosette where the handrail ends in the wall and a half newel is not used, it may be trimmed by a rosette. Easing's wall handrails are mounted directly onto the wall with wall brackets. At the bottom of the stairs such railings flare to a horizontal railing and this horizontal portion is called a starting easing. At the top of the stairs, the horizontal portion of the railing is called a over-easing. Core rail wood handrails often have a metal core to provide extra strength and stiffness especially when the rail has to curve against the grain of the wood. The archaic term for the metal core is Core Rail General Guidelines The following are some of the general guidelines to be considered while planning a staircase. The respective dimensions of tread and riser for all the parallel steps should be the same in consecutive floor of a building. The minimum vertical headroom above any step should be 2M. Generally, the number of risers in a flight should be restricted to 12. The minimum width of stair should be 850 millimeters, 
though it is desirable to have the width between 1.1 to 1.6 m. In public building, cinema halls etc., large widths of the stair should be provided. Effective Span of Stairs The stipulations of Clause 33 of IS 456 are given below as a ready reference regarding the determination of effective span of stair. Three different cases are given to determine the effective span of stairs without stringer beams. The horizontal center-to-center -center distance of beams should be considered as the effective span when the slab is supported at top and bottom risers by beams spanning parallel with the risers. The horizontal distance equal to the going of the stairs plus at each end either half the width of the landing or one meter, whichever is smaller when the stair slab is spanning onto the edge of allending slab which spans parallel with the risers. See table for the effective span for this type of staircases shown in figure below. Serial number X Y Effective span in meters 1 Less than 1 meter dot less than 1 meter G and X and Y 2 Less than 1 meter more than equal to 1 meter. G and X plus 1. 3. More than equal to 1 meter. Less than 1 meter. G and Y plus 1. 4. More than equal to 1 meter more than equal to 1 meter g plus 1 plus 1 how to construct concrete stairs construction of concrete stairs includes steps such as designing preparing foundation building formwork placement of reinforcement steel bars concreting Finishing and curing Construction of concrete stairs is a difficult task that requires an engineer to study all the aspects and design it and askilled labor to construct it. Steps for Construction of Concrete Stairs The followings are the steps involved in construction of concrete stairs. Designing of concrete stairs Designing of stairs requires through knowledge about design aspects and site study. The factors that influence the design of stairs are height of the floor, width of the stairs, risers depth, thread width, thickness of the stairs, angle of the stairs, load applied on the stairs and many other aspects which requires a qualified engineer to design the perfect stairs. Component Standard Dimension Thread 99.25 inch riser 7.58.25 inch width 3 feet Foundation and support for concrete stairs The foundation on which the concrete stairs rest is to be properly constructed so that the loads of the stairs are transferred into ground successfully and to resist the movement of stairs. 
If the plinth beam of building is present at the start of the stairs, then the reinforcement steel's bars can be connected to them which will transfer the loads. If no plinth beam is found, then a small concrete foundation or size stone masonry is constructed. To support the stairs at the top which restricts the movement of stairs is usually done to the roof beam or slab. Building the formwork for concrete stairs The most important step when building concrete stairs is to use a proper formwork. The angle of flight, dimensions of thread and riser are to be properly checked. Usually while constructing a stairs attached to wall, the line of flight, thread, and risers are marked on the wall for proper fixing of shuttering or formwork. The boards must be at least 2 inches thick, as to support the weight of the concrete. The whole structure of the form, must be supported by 4 posts. The wooden boards are used to create the steps and are fastened with several screws to the lateral. Steel Reinforcement for Concrete Stairs The concrete steps are to be reinforced with steel bars so as it carries the loads coming upon the stairs and transfer them to the ground. The number of steel bars and size of the bars is to be calculated by as structural engineers depending upon the loads coming on the stairs. These steel reinforcement bars are placed in the formwork with minimum of 25 mm spacing and is tied together. Pouring of concrete for concrete stairs Pouring of concrete into the formworks is started from the below part to above. The concrete mix plays an important role in strength and durability of stairs. Standard mix used for stairs are 3 PARTS cement, 2 PARTS sand, 4 PARTS gravel, and water. It is recommended to use a concrete vibrator while pouring the concrete to completely fill the gaps of the stairs and to avoid the honeycomb formation. This work is to be carried out with great care and patience as any sudden movements can disturb the alignment of the formworks or even collapse the formwork. It is always recommended to pour the concrete ceiling and stairs in the same day, as to create a strong bond between these components. Removal of Formwork the stairs requires at least 21 days to dry out completely, so the removal of formwork is to done only after 21 days. In these 21 days proper curing is to done to prevent the cracks in stairs due to thermal expansion. After the 21 days, the formwork is removed by using a hammer and a crowbar. Work with patience, as to avoid damaging the concrete or the edges of the stairs. Finishing of concrete stairs Once the formwork is removed, the stairs can be finished in many ways as per the requirement of the use. It can just be finished using trowel or float to give concrete finish, cement tiles, granite can be installed for better appearance. Even carpet or wood can also be used to finish the stairs.
Design of stairs will be discussed in another video. Thanks for watching. For now, please subscribe, like, share and do not forget to press bell icon.